you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open and what you conceived. From big to small shall today be revealed. In Alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome again to the inevitable journey. In the last episodes, we talked about the certainties and we wondered and we questioned the certainty of the Ummah in regard to these four certainties. Once it comes to death, once it comes to the graveyard, once it comes to the day of resurrection, and once it comes to the everlasting abode in Jannah or in the hellfire, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we mentioned the two diseases, and they are diseases because anything that takes your eye off the ball, that distracts you from doing what you were made to do, would be a disease. The Ummah, brothers and sisters in Islam, lost a lot because of that disconnection between the phases of the inevitable journey and the one phase that they are in, which is the life of this world. And it is the time now for us to come back to our deen, come back and learn about our creed, and the inevitable journey is one part of that creed. Brothers and sisters in Islam, for you to understand that our creed comprises three main pieces, main parts. Part number one is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawheed. Who is Allah? His names, attributes. Allah is the Lord, the Rabb. And Allah is the Ilah, the God to be worshipped. And the violation of that ibadah, of that worship. This is piece number one. Part number one of a Muslim creed. The second piece or the second part is the message and the messengers. The books, the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to us to remind us of his oneness and to inform us why we were created and also to direct us to work for the third piece which is the hereafter, which is the inevitable journey. The third piece, brothers and sisters in Islam, is the one that has to do with the hereafter. And this is the one that the inevitable journey, inshallah, these series of episodes will help you understand ta'ala a lot regarding the hereafter. I just wanted you to learn and know that this has been the approach and the methodology of the Prophet regarding educating the first generation of Muslims. Fi Sahih al-Bukhari, Aisha radiyallahu anha said that awwalu ma nazala min al-Qur'an, the first thing that was revealed for us in the Qur'an, in Mecca, who's Allah and Jannah and Hellfire. This is what they learned for almost 13 years. Look, when the verses of the commands 
were revealed in Medina. Look at the reaction of that blessed generation of Muslims. Just two incidents I'll share with you. And I really want you to understand so you can help yourselves and help the Ummah. Because this is our way back right here. Look, the first incident when the verses of the hijab were revealed. And the hadith of Sahih Bukhari also. Hadith Aisha radiallahu anha and Ibn Umar the way. Hadith Aisha radiallahu anha as well. Ya ayyuhan nabi, listen, a command. O Prophet, قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ وَنِسَائِكَ وَبَنَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِي بِهِنْ ذَلِكَ أَذْنَا أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَ فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ Till your wives, your daughters, and the women of the believers to cover themselves. This is a verse in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ahzab. Look at the reaction of the women who were taught the creed earlier in Mecca. Aisha radiallahu anha said, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ نِسَاءَ الْأَنصَارِ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy in the women of Al-Ansar. Another wording, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ نِسَاءَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ الْأُوَلِ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the women of the, the wives of the uh, first generation who migrated from Mecca to Medina. They were wearing something called mintaq or extra clothes on them. They tore it and they covered themselves immediately. Because they know who is Allah. They know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to command something, that command must be met with, we hear and we obey. And that's the one difference between us. Go now to, and I'm not being negative or nagging, go now to a sister and tell her to put her hijab on. She's going to say, no, let me wait until I get married. Let me wait until I... No, that's the one difference. Because the creed, the knowledge regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regarding the message and the messengers, regarding the hereafter, they knew that if you disobey Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, that graveyard will be a bit of fire. The standing in the day of resurrection will be painful, and the abode will be the hellfire. And they knew that the reward of the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be a garden underneath the ground, a comfortable standing in the day of resurrection, and everlasting abode in Jannah. That's what led them to work sister, brother, because they had a visualization of the inevitable journey. Look at one of the companions, beautiful hadith, fi Sahih Muslim, Hanzalah ibn Asid, radiyallahu anhu, famous hadith that knows in, known in the sunnah, nafaqa Hanzalah. You know why Hanzalah thought that he is a hypocrite? Why? Because once he is with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would describe to him Jannah and Nar. Look what he said. We believe in it so much like we see it with our own eyes. We see ourselves in Jannah and we see ourselves in the hellfire. The way that he describes it to us Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad. And once he's away from the Prophet وسلم, he sees himself a little bit busy with this world. حتى إذا خرجنا من عندي, once we leave him, then we start mingling with our wives and with our children. Ah, this is dunya. No, that's why he thought he's not doing enough. The same exact thing. The hereafter, if you learn about it, will be a powerful charge that will charge all of you. Motivate all of you to work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and work to spare yourselves. The other incident. And uh, I was reading lately that in America, in the 1930s, more or less, they infested somewhat 80 million dollars, 1930, 80 million dollars is a lot of money, 
You know to do what? To stop people from drinking alcohol. This is before the lobbying for alcohol started, but once America was... So now, what happens at the end of that campaign? Please do not drink while you're driving. Compare this with this. People who were taught the creed, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who were taught Jannah, they learned about the hellfire, they learned about everything, they understood the consequences of the things that they do in this world, in Mecca. Look when the verse, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسُرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجْسٌ مِّنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Alcohol, gambling, are tools of shaitan. Stop it. Keep away from it. A caller went through the Medina that day. إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَ الْخَمْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made alcohol haram. Immediately, jars of alcohol were spilled. They tell you that the corridors of Medina that day were filled with liquor, spilled out. Immediate response, immediate action. You know why? Because the creed was established. They learned who is Allah. They learned about the message and the messages. They learned about the inevitable journey, the hereafter. And that's where we need to go back and re-educate ourselves about it. Because this will help us commit ourselves again to this deen. And again, this is the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhuma, fi sahih al-Bukhari, when he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal, radiyallahu anh, to Yemen. What did he tell him? Ya Mu'adh, innaka ta'ti qawman ahla kitab. And this hadith goes to the brothers who live in the western world. You live, you will come to people of the book. Listen. Liyakun awwala ma tad'uuhum ilayhi la ilaha illa Allah. Let be the first thing that you explain to them, share with them, is la ilaha illa Allah, is the aqeedah, is the creed. Then, after that, tell them about the Salah, tell them about the fasting, tell them about Hajj. Of course, this does not apply to us, brothers and sisters in Islam. You still have to implement the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are commanded because you're already a Muslim. But what you need to do is you need to re-educate yourselves about your creed once again. And don't take it for granted. And you will see once you learn more about your creed, which made of who is Allah, the message and the messages, and the hereafter, the inevitable journey, you will find out that you will fall in love with Islam once again. Let's talk about the inevitable journey more, inshallah, after a short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole lifespan.